Hello and welcome to My Consultant, your weekly dose of Canadian immigration updates. We will start today's episode by disclosing Canada's latest immigration decisions on parents and grandparents visa, followed by four provinces that have recently issued invitations for provincial nominee program and federal government's record transfers. Next, I will share how IRCC is ensuring gender equality and Tishina will share Canada's expansion of pilot program to include skilled refugees. High demand since its launch in 2011, the Canadian Super Visa, which is a temporary multi-entry visa that allows the parent and grandparents of a Canadian citizen or permanent resident to stay with them here in Canada for up to five years at a time with a validity of 10 years. However, in August 2022, Canada introduced some unexpected changes to the visa program that resulted in some backlash including an online petition that was submitted to the Canadian government. The petition argued that the new payment system was punitive towards families seeking to be reunited and that this new decision was resulting in fewer applications being granted. Among the changes was the condition that applicants are now required to pay the full medical insurance amount upfront annually. The price for insurance coverage does vary depending on age, but on average, the price for a 65-year-old would be around $1,500 and higher if the applicant is older. Previously to this change, applicants were allowed to pay the medical insurance amount in installments on a weekly basis, a much more wallet-friendly request. Well, in the wake of this, and maybe the holiday spirit, the Canadian government has recently announced the reversal of its decision. Families can once again pay the parent and grandparent super visa medical insurance in monthly installments. The move has been welcomed by applicants, insurance and immigration experts as a way to make it easier for families to reunite. Four Canadian provinces, British Columbia, Quebec, Manitoba and Prince Edward Island have recently issued invitations to apply to entrusted candidates through provincial immigration. Quebec invited 998 skilled workers to apply for permanent selection on November 24th and an additional 513 on December 1st. On December 6th, British Columbia invited over 188 candidates for provincial nomination. The invitations were issued to candidates in the skilled worker and international graduates categories. 305 candidates were invited under the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program. Skilled workers in Manitoba were issued 206 invitations with a minimum score of 775 while International Education's team issued 56 invitations with no score requirement. In Prince Edward Island, a total of 69 candidates were invited through the Labour and Express entry streams on December 1st. With this, Prince Edward Island invited 1,721 candidates so far in 2022. The Provincial Nominee Program accounts for 105,000 permanent residence admissions per year. Getting a Provincial Nominee can be beneficial for gaining permanent residency in the future. The federal government is in motion to support provinces and territories by providing them with the additional funding they need to provide Canadians with the high-quality health care they deserve. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance announced that the Canadian government will provide a record of $94.6 billion in major transfer funding to provinces and territories in 2023-2024. This is a $7 billion increase from 2022-2023. 
all provinces and territories will receive a year-over-year -year increase in major transfer amounts. The Canada Health Transfer, the CHT, provides long-term predictable funding for healthcare and supports the principles of the Canada Health Act. The CHT grows in line with the Canadian government and as a result of Canada's strong recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic recession will increase by 9.3% to $49.4 billion. This funding, allocated equally per capita, supports provinces and territories in providing Canadians with the health care services they need. The major federal transfers to provinces and territories also include the Canada Social Transfer, Equalization, and Territorial Formal Financing. The Canada Social Transfer supports post-secondary education, social assistance, social services, early childhood development, and early learning and childcare. Equalization ensures that provincial governments have sufficient revenues to provide reasonably comparable levels of public services at reasonably comparable levels of taxation. And territorial formal financing helps the three territorial governments fund essential public services, recognizing the high cost of providing those in the North. In 2023-2024, every province and territory will benefit from higher transfers from the federal government, which will result in building a stronger and more prosperous Canada, from coast to coast to coast. The Government of Canada is committed to full and equal participation of all women and girls which is also essential to Canada's economic growth and prosperity. This is why Canada is making it easier for racialized newcomer women to find a job by providing them the support and services they would need to succeed. As part of Canada's 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, the Government of Canada's intend to renew up to $5.8 million in funding until 2025 for 10 projects supported under the Racialized Newcomer Women Pilot. This announcement was made on behalf of Immigration Minister Sean Fraser and is in addition to the $15 million over two years that was allocated in Budget 2021 to extend support for this pilot. IRCC Racialized Newcomer Women Pilot supports the delivery of targeted employment-related settlement services, including work placements, mentorships, and job counseling. The pilot aims to help racialized newcomer women find meaningful work in Canada and progress in their careers. The pilot supports organizations that deliver programs designed to address the barriers faced by racialized newcomer women, such as gender and race-based discrimination, unstable employment, and lack of childcare affordability. Through this program, participants can gain practical work experience and develop their skills and abilities in a Canadian work environment, while being supported with job training employment-related workshops, and job counselling to help break down barriers to finding a job. The Government of Canada also continues to work collaboratively with all the organisations across Canada dedicated to end gender-based violence for all newcomers. To help support this goal, the Gender-Based Violence Settlement Sector Strategy Project was created. This project is a unique coordinated partnership between the settlement and anti-violence sectors that works on gender-based violence prevention by facilitating more action, awareness and coordination. The project builds the capacity of frontline settlement sector workers to effectively respond to gender-based violence and offers enhanced services for newcomers and refugees through information, training and tailored resources related to gender-based violence. Immigration Minister Sean Fraser says that racialized newcomer women face significant challenges in entering the workforce. 
Through this pilot, the government of Canada wants to prevent and end gender-based violence by ensuring that there is gender equality across all sectors. As the world faces its worst global refugee crisis in recent history, Canada continues to do its part. The Honourable Sean Fraser, Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship, just announced new funding to partner organizations to help expand the EMPP, Canada's Economic Mobility Pathways Pilot, to more skilled refugees. Over the next few years, Canada plans to work with employers and communities across the country to expand the pilot and welcome 2,000 skilled refugees to fill specific labor shortages in high demand sectors such as healthcare, skilled trades, and information technology. Through the EMPP, Partner organizations help skilled refugees overseas connect with employers who are in need of filling the crucial labor shortages in occupations like nurses' aides, personal support workers, chefs, cooks, and skilled tradespeople. During the announcement, the Honorable Sean Fraser, Minister of Immigration, Refugee and Citizenship, was quoted elaborating that, through this groundbreaking program, our government is highlighting skilled refugees' professional achievement by allowing them to continue their career in Canada while giving employers access to a pool of global talent. Once candidates receive a job offer, they can apply to immigrate to Canada through existing economic programs using EMPP measures to remove barriers refugees may experience due to their displacement. To aid in the application process for qualified candidates, Canada is turning out a new, more flexible process with its trusted partners. The partners, who include Talent Beyond Barriers, Talent Lift, and Jumpstart Refugee Talent, will be able to directly refer and support candidates. Trusted partners will receive mandatory training and go through quality assurance reviews. In addition, Canada will be providing support of $6.2 million to six projects by EMPP partner organizations. These projects will build the capacity of these organizations in key areas, including identifying quality candidates overseas and supporting candidates and employers through the interview, hiring, and immigration process. Funding will also support the work of a partner organization that helps EMPP newcomers with affordable microloans. As of October 2022, Canada has already welcomed over 100 skilled refugees and their family members under Canada's Economic Mobility Pathways Pilot. Well, that wraps up this week's episode of My Consultant. Thank you so much for joining us this year. It was a pleasure to be with you weekly. Please click the bell icon to subscribe to the My Consultant YouTube channel. For more information on the topics covered in this week's episode, please visit myconsultant.ca where you can contact an authorized immigration and citizenship consultant. I'm Tashina Thompson. And I am Tina Batra. We wish you happy holidays and a great new year. See you next week. Happy